playing Evan for now. So at the beginning, guys, you got three factions to choose from. Uh, either Evan, which is a uh, faction where you need to build up your own battlefield, and uh, from there move towards uh, the damage to the opponents, or you could choose Necropolis, which is a control-ish kind of deck, uh, where you can kill, kill creatures, steal them, and, uh, and do all those sort of things. And then there's Inferno, which is kind of straightforward. Uh, you got damage on, the, on those creatures, you got awesome damage, low HP. Wanna try to get in and make it happen. So starting for Evan, uh, the cards that you need, actually, well, first of all, the base hero they give you is pretty good. So Cassandra has a lot of value because she has, um, she has life, she has air magic as well. I'm just gonna reduce that sound here. And I know, I mean, the base hero doesn't have the special ability, but they have an additional stat, which is destiny, which can be pretty good even on advanced I elo decks. So uh, don't disregard the heroes you have right now, it, they're still really good. And also the two spell schools here. So you have air and light. But to start with, what you need to do if you're starting with Evan, you want to aim, if possible, uh, with the wall cards. Try to get as much wolf captain as possible in the beginning. Because it costs only two resources, uh, their ability is really strong, and uh, it's basically a staple card. You really need that card to be able to... Uh, to make uh, the better of advanced decks, so try to aim for that as soon as possible uh, if you're actually going for Evan. The other cards that might be quite interesting there is um, the Oli Perturant. The Middle Guard 2 is quite an awesome ability, doesn't cost too much, and if played correctly, if you put one, two to three of them uh, in your deck, it can be quite amazing as well. So try to aim for these uh, whenever you can with Evan. Those two are, in my opinion, the Staples cards. This could be interesting as well. It's as well. It's a bit different from the other Persian, which is melee guard. This one is range. It works. It really depends on the situation. So, as I said before, Evan is all about positioning and about building your own battlefield and then moving uh, with those creatures into the opponent's heroes. Yeah, so that's it for the basic creatures for the two cost. Um, moving on to the three cost. These guys, okay, they're pretty simple. You can get them from reinforcement pack. I think it's the same. No, uh, uh, Wolf Captain is in the Void Rising, I believe, or uh, one of these two expansion. But Radiant Glory uh, is an awesome card. The Flyer ability is actually quite strong because you can put uh, them right behind those other patterns as an example. And the 3 damage, 5 HP, is always good. If you can actually try to get 4 of them as soon as possible, it's really gonna upgrade your game as an event deck, and you might actually have a chance of getting 1,000 elo and more quite easily. And uh, most of the events deck use four of these, so try to try to get them as fast as possible. Also, uh, new Forgotten Wars uh, card, uh, the Cruiser the Chaplain is definitely a great card, not only for the value of stats, but the ability is really strong. Cards in graveyard cannot be targeted, so that's of course uh, mostly Necropolis eight, but. Um, it has the no damage, I mean, well, it doesn't have any damage, it cannot be targeted. So it's awesome even against uh, Dark Spell Schools or any of the other kind of like air magic that can like one-shot most of the creatures out there. So if you can get some of these, that's awesome. Also, I forgot about uh, one of the staple scars that most Evan deck uses. Income, one, uh, Tide Collectors. These guys are amazing. I know that it doesn't seem that strong because their stats is 0, zero 2 but income one can actually be uh, quite powerful if you stack them with the other income guy that I'm going to talk about right after this. Uh, you can make some pretty nice combo, get a lot of resources at the beginning and then put the field, I mean, uh, uh, get the, a lot of creatures on the field quite easily. So definitely try to aim for these cre creatures if you can. They are really good, even though they don't have the one attack damage. Just move them around, try to get them to stick, stick alive, and then utilize that uh, income one ability. Moving on, uh, I said I was going to talk about the other income uh, creature, which is... Let me find it. There we go. It's called the Crusader Treasurer. It, it is a Forgotten Wars card. So of course with uh, Forgotten Wars box, if you want to go for the wild cards, you have a chance of getting that guy. And he's awesome. Uh, not only does he only cost 4, and requirements are quite low, He's over 5 HP, which is uh, decent because it survives to most spells out there. And also, uh, he has the income 2 BLT. So if you can like stack them up real quick at the beginning, you can basically just put all the creatures on the battlefield and make it happen quick, which is probably one of the uh, best strategies out there with Ivan right now. Trying to get the income guys fast and make it happen. So if you can get 
these guys with uh, uh, the other income person, it's, it's quite good as well. Also, uh, new for Fortnite Wars, I keep talking about Fortnite Wars, but they had an upgrade in that expansion, Evan did. So, uh, if you can grab some of these uh, creatures, it's really going to up your game there for Evan. Uh, so moving on, the Crusader Watchman is actually really strong for the only reason that it is super cheap. For two resources, it's basically a two-two-five. You means retaliation, and uh, okay, if it takes damage, it reduces the damage. That that is fine, but it works with an event that I'm gonna talk right now about, which is a new event in Forgotten Wars. It's called Week of Training. Until the end of turn, creatures with a base base attack of one or less. So that means the tide collector. That means the only predator in the card I talked about. That means the new uh, well, the card I just previously talked about as well, which is a zero one uh, one five, but it gets plus two damage. Uh, actually, adds one more damage to it. So it becomes a three damage creature. And uh, what's nice about this event is that it's only gonna work for your side of the battlefield. So this is why it's an awesome event. If you can try to get this and try to utilize the one damage and zero damage uh, creatures in Evan uh, with their strong ability, you can definitely make a lot of stuff happen. Moving on, let's keep on going for creatures for Evan. Mm -hmm. So we talked about wolf captains. I talked about these ones as well. Um, Moving on the four costs, it's varied really what I'm going to go for, but I would definitely recommend this one if you play uh, the basic hero because she gives you a free two fortune uh, destiny at the beginning. And the ability of that uh, flyer angel is quite strong. You can utilize that to recycle cards, and that's awesome. It's a card advantage card, so you, if possible, if you have it, please play it. Uh, it's going to help you get started in the game. Moving on to the five costs, let's see if I missed something. Um, these two, I know it's quite far to get there, but the Crusader Commander and uh, the St Scatterman Marksman, the new cars out of the Fogden Wars uh, expansion, are actually really good. It's a late game kind of kind of card there, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, their ability, their stats, and uh, for the cost, uh, both of them are super strong, and it helps really up the game of the late game of uh, Evan, which is quite. Uh, quite a problem uh, normally with Evan. They're more like a mid-range, uh, almost late game uh, kind of a faction, but with those two cards it's possible to make it happen. I don't think they have anything at six cards that is that amazing. Um, I'm just gonna... yeah. So of course, uh, normally uh, when you play Magic Data Ring and whatever other CCG, you want to put the big creatures uh, as soon as possible on board because you just did big effects and big, st big stats. In this game, it's not that great. Normally, you want to go for four, five mites. Six mites is quite rare because the more you upgrade the level of the hero, the less cards you're gonna draw. So you tend then to actually focus on either like um, magic or destiny, and of course a bit of might to have some creatures on the board to you know be able to deal with some threats there. But uh, exactly, so that's why some decks utilize just they just go for like four might, five might, and then they draw two two cards a turn. And they try to snowball you as fast as possible, which is one of the uh, end game kind of deck, which is called Kragak. But nevertheless, um, in this particular game, what you want to go for is uh, have a maximum of might and maximum of spells uh, to level up for all, all your cards you have, and not go too far because you need to draw two cards a turn. Uh, the two cards a turn is really a great advantage. Uh, it's gonna get you the, the snowballing. If, if your opponent has to level up and you only draw a card a turn, you can put two creatures instead. Uh, most of the decks actually run four or five mites, so yeah, don't try to go too far, even though the creatures have actually a nice ability and they look super shiny, you know, like, oh man, I wanna play them. It sucks. Um, try to put two creatures instead because there's so many uh, easy wipes in the game that it's not an easy uh, remove on the game, that it's not that worth it to put big creatures. That is the main reason, really. So I talk about incoming, the income guys, uh, the ready glories, which are like staple creatures as well. Of course, you can run variants uh, like all the other creatures, like uh, Griffin Knight or Wolf Marksman. They work in a certain way, but I'm just trying to give you guys the staple creatures for Evan to help you get started. So I believe I went through them all for the creatures. 
We run into spells, we got Cassandra, uh, one of the spells I want to go for as soon as possible that has a lot of value is called Sunburst, uh, deal 3 damage to all creatures of target row. That ability is so cheap, it only costs 2 magic and it costs 2 resources, but a lot of creatures have 3 HP, uh, let's say maybe 5, 6, you can use that Sunburst and then make it happen, so that might be tr truly interesting. I use Sunburst in a lot of my spell decks, it is one of the best removal, for the cost it's quite the value. Definitely trying to go for that. Um, and moving on for the lives as well. I believe um, Bless, which is a... This card is actually good at the beginning, in the low elo. When you start the game, that's plus two damage. And it, it's permanent too. It's The requirement, the cost is not so bad. It surprised the opponent. You're going to get the advantage of the battlefield in a second. And if you play it right, you can make a lot of stuff happen. Eventually, you want to move towards cleansing lights, destroy all ongoing spells in play because there's so much really awesome ongoing spells in the game. Some of them actually make the whole deck. Uh, therefore, eventually, you might have to go for something similar to this. Or, uh, if you still want to keep on going Cassandra, you don't actually need to go for a spell because she has a two destiny bonus compared to the others, which is normally one, as an example, with Siegfried. You can go Fortune 2. But yeah, I'm just giving you like a few really good cards that you need to get uh, value from and uh, that's really the staple scars for this deck. Of course there's different tactics as, and, s for, and so on but uh, also if you play light and you have a few wall cards to spare the Light of Tomorrow is going to get you the card advantage in a few turns it's a really powerful spell and uh, if you can recycle those angels, that can recycle other cards, you know, you can, you can do like crazy stuff with, uh, with that card here. So, uh, if you have a chance to get it, uh, it's going to be worthwhile, definitely. So, uh, yeah, that's about it for Evan. And also, uh, try to look into uh, either, well, I would say, I would recommend the website mmduckking.com because uh, this website is going to actually has the latest deck since the expansion. It doesn't have the old decks uh, from the other expansions. So you have new content, uh, better adaptability to the meta. So definitely try to take a look at that website and see and go check this, the decks as well. And uh, normally if you, if you actually uh, try to go for the, a good deck that works and incorporate those cards and those, let's say, uh, requirements like level and, and magic, um, it's definitely gonna increase your percentage win rate, for sure.